Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, North Flight Images. This is just a quick update video for people who are interested in my ongoing testing of this, the Epson ET 18100 or 18100, which I'm told is essentially identical to the L18050, which is another model number it's known as in Europe. I don't believe there are any differences, but I will check that out before I do the final review. Anyway, this particular one, I've been doing some more profiling. Why am I telling you about profiling? Well, if there is one way to find out how a printer really performs, how it handles paper, all kinds of things, it's to make profiles. You have to go through various paper testing settings. I, I did a short video about this the other day looking at it, but in this instance, I'm just looking at how it handles metallic papers, glossy papers. First of all, um, I did a print the other day just using Epson's uh, pre, uh, ICC profile on Epson Premium Glossy Photo Paper. And I've created my own profile now as well, printing this. And right off, I look at this and there is not the slightest gloss differential. I would get slight gloss differential on the ET8550, which would suggest that there is a subtly different ink set in the blacks, not just the pigment black, but in the dye black, uh, in the uh, 8550 and 8500. Um, certainly in terms of gloss, uh, out and out, straightforward, glossy photo prints, uh, this is um, one of the best printers I've looked at in this respect for quite some time. Now, that's just glossy paper. Uh, here's a profiling sheet I made for testing on Epson Premium Luster. I didn't go to quite the size of this. I just, this 1,005 patches on this one versus 3,000 to that. I'll get a good profile of this because this paper works with the printer. Uh, the better the paper works with the printer, actually you don't need quite so many patches. Uh, this is good for handling tricky papers and ones like this. Fortunately, I've got an automated patch reader. It still takes 15-20 minutes to do the reading of this, but it's better than doing it by hand. Um, as a quick thing, and I will be looking at black and white as a subject in its own. Uh, here is using the grayscale print mode, using Epson, print, uh, Epson Premium Luster paper. And this was a high quality setting. I've used the Premium Semi-Gloss Photo setting, which is as close as you're gonna get to a Premium Luster on this. And this is um, pretty neutral. Um, I haven't tested this for its linearity, but it is looking good. It shows promise using a paper that the printer is made for. Now how well this will look on some other papers, some art papers and things like that, I don't know. But that's something I will be covering. But as I said, this was, I was specifically looking at metallic papers and I've looked at quite a few of them here. And this is the, uh, the glossiest, shiniest of the lot. And this is the Permajet Titanium Gloss 300. Um, there is not a mark of ink gloss differential on it. It is just shiny, luminescent. I'll be doing some quite a few test prints on that just to see how well these sorts of papers perform. Now I've got several others. I've got a, a um, Photospeed Metallic Luster 275. Now that's one of the traditional older type metallic ones that has a slight bluish purplish sheen to it. Doesn't work with all images. Some images it does. Um, I much prefer this style of uh, metallic. And I've got two other metallics here, um, and that is a two Red River papers uh, from the US that uh, they were kind enough to send me to have a look at. Uh, that's the Polar Luster Metallic 255 and the Polar Gloss Metallic 255. Now, I happen to know that there are a, a similar papers available in the UK as this. Now, I, when I do the review, I put what similar papers are available. Remember, there are only so many manufacturers and coaters of specialist coaters of papers. So if you find something in one country, it's quite a chance you'll find it under perhaps a different name somewhere else. But anyway, that is four different metallic papers there, as well as the basic glossy, which works very well. I haven't got any other Epson, any of the Epson super duper gloss, extra double premium or whatever it's called. Um, this is just good old premium glossy photo paper. It works well. One other bit, I thought, well, while well, I'm doing this, and I've got lots more of these still to run through, uh, but this is just the, uh, the, the shiny stuff. 
I thought, right, let's try a couple of Baraita papers in this because these are all RC or resin coated type papers. So they're quite thin, they're quite hard papers. Uh, they don't take marks very easily. I put some thinner art papers through this when I was doing testing the other day and didn't notice any issues. However, I also tested, and these are typical of a lot of uh, Baraita papers that I use. Um, as a, Red River Big Ben Baraita 310 and Red River Palo Duro Baraita Fiber 300. Now, they're different surface coatings. Um, I've got a review that looks at them on the big P5000 here. What are they like putting them through on this? Well, unfortunately, um, both papers show roller marks from inside the, dry, inside the mechanism here. And they're the initial rollers, so they are creases on the paper. And it's because the, you've got a fiber-based paper, and then on top of that, you've got the coating layer, and it makes a mark. Now, I can see it, one couple of, couple of marks on it, very slight dents in the paper. Um, they don't detract from the quality of the picture, but do I really want dents on the paper? And I tried, as I say, a couple of 300 GSM Baraita papers and I got the same problem, which is a pity because the surface takes the colors very well. So it looks as if, if you want to get good results out of this, using sense, you know, fragile papers uh, that are easily marked, you're going to have problems with it. You get similar problems sometimes. I didn't when I was testing, but with the ET8550, I've noticed as well. Some people have said there are roller marks from it. And it's almost certainly there are some rollers in here that take where the paper curves, right? Because it's not a straight through path. The paper goes round like that through the printer. And there are some rollers there and they are leaving marks on the paper. Now, at some point, um, I leave it as an exercise to the viewer for somebody to take one of these apart and re-engineer those rollers because they are an issue. Um, it's an annoyance because the printer has no difficulty in printing well on this, but I don't want dents on it. You could say that actually this is meant as a photo printer and that means printing on RC type papers. Now, I think it will print on fine art papers as well, but I'm going to be looking more into that. And other media, such as canvas, I tried it on. But I'm a bit disappointed that, once again, Baraita is a worse paper. But then again, for the ET8550 when I, and 8500, when I looked at that, Baraita papers tend to be the worst performing on printers like this. If you want to use these style of papers, you need to get, um, say, a better printer of some form and that should work for you. Anyway, that's just a quick update of some of the things I'm doing here, some of the testing. If you've got any questions, please ask because the questions are what sort of give me the ideas for different things to test that I may forget about while it's here. So thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. I, you'll get all the updates I'll do on testing the 18100 and um, thank you.